In Creo 7, a new workflow was introduced by the name of multi-body design. Now, I'm not going to go over every single point listed in the slideshow. So if you want to read through most of it, then feel free to pause the video and read as you'd like. In the background, I'm just going to be talking about some of the benefits and some of the ease of use when it comes to working with multi-body design versus the typical top-down design approach. First one being that you can create construction bodies to indicate space claims. So this helps if your space claim were to shrink or increase, then all the other bodies in that master model would update accordingly. You can also have different materials listed from within a single part. You can also reduce the complexity and avoid your external or circular references, just making it easier to follow the flow of information between your bodies and parts and makes it easier to visualize and detail the derived geometry, whether it be to increase your clearances or even decrease them and detailing in your drawings later on. So now I'm just going to go over into the technical demo. Now I first want to draw your attention into our feature tree. So here you'll see we've got three different materials and multiple bodies. The steel being our default or master material. And then our body, body one, being the base of our vice. And I assigned the material EN26 to it. And then body two, if we look at the back, we can see that it is a sheet metal converted or converted to sheet metal plate, which I assign it to being uh, aluminium or 6082 to be specific. Now, the other thing also being that you'll see a little star indicated here on body five, seeing as that was the last body I created, Creo automatically set that as my new default body. <clears throat> but just for the demo, I'm going to be setting body one as my default. And now what I'm going to do in my selection criteria, I'm going to be changing to sketch region. I'm going to select the bigger surface here. And as you can see, I get my little pop-up with all my other functions. Now the extrude feature for sheet metal has been enabled because I already converted body two into sheet metal, but we're going to be using the standard extrude feature. So I'm going to take it to the reference here. And as you can see that it's already merging it because I've got my body there as default. Now there is another way to override this. I just want to select my other reference there. So now when we go into body options, you can always, even if that is set as the default body, you can tell Creo that no, I want to create a new body. And then we can see these separated instances. And there we can see the star or the default body has now been enabled on body six, the stationary draw that we just inserted. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to hide that body. Once again, make sure that sketch region is selected. I'm going to select that one, hold control and select the bottom side. So this is essentially a six by six key that I'm putting in here. And I'm just going to extrude. I'm going to go to reference here and now if I enable this, you'll see that it has merged with the previous body. I'm just going to hide it again, go to options, go to reference. And now once again, we're just going to tell Creo, no, we want to create a whole new body. So now, of course, we've got some interference here, but what we can do is we can utilize our Boolean operations to subtract, and I'm just going to select keep bodies. I'll disable it for now just to see, just so you can see what the difference is. So you can see we can select multiple. And now I selected the bodies to be modified, meaning the stationary jaw and our base. And here is the modifying body. And now, of course, because I don't have keep bodies enabled, it has deleted, it's going to delete that body. But once I enable it, all the bodies are there. Now, 
Now, just to show you what I've already done with one, um, body one is I have created a part from body. Now, this is typically because we've already got our design. We understand what we're going to do and it's now fitting in. Let's just say, for instance, in our space claim, what we now want to do is we want to go over into an assembly. So the workflow for that is to right click on the body and then say create part from body. Now, just to show you that the update is driven from here. I'm going to go over to the base. Here we can see the EN26. We can see some additional features, which you will see in the assembly. As I hit regenerate, we can see that it has been copied without adding an additional feature in here. Now, just to go over that whole process in detail, a bit more detail, what I'm going to do is just select body six, create part from body, and we're going to call this our stay jaw, and there's our body and just as the last one for the assembly purposes i'm going to do the same for our stationary jaw I hit regenerate. Here we can see that the material is steel and the material in this one is also steel. So now I'm going to hop over into my assembly. And there you can see that it is updated just now because I re already regenerated the part. I'm just going to hit regen again. And now here are one of the features that I really enjoy about working with in a multi body environment. It's as we say assemble. What I can do is I can say stationary draw as I open that. I just hold right click, default constraints, and everything is in position already. I'm just going to do the same for our key. And there we go. And just to show that here are some of the other features that I've also got in the, or the other parts that I've got in my multi-body design. So here's the jaw liner. And as you can see that I used my intelligent fasteners. And they created our countersink hole. And just to show that you can always just use other than the default. It is not constrained according to the multi-body part. It only derives its geometry from the multi-body part. I'm just going to show you the back here. Here is our sheet metal plate as well with some additional features for the countersunk holes. Thank you. If you do have any further questions, feel free to reach out at us uh, at product one and we will get back to you as soon as possible.